All right, what's up guys? It's me, Packy, with the house bowling again, and we have another challenge for you guys. This time it's the 10 ball challenge. We each brought 10 bowling balls, one ball per frame. I brought a little bit of every style, big balls, weak balls, some in between. You got any strategy that you, you're taking or no? Maybe straighter is greater for this, just that way you'll have a smaller difference between balls. For me, I tried to bring two different groups of balls. I brought some smoother balls and some weaker balls, and hopefully I can play similar lines with those two separate groups. Best of luck to you. Good luck. And we will uh, we'll see who wins, but 10 balls, one ball per frame, and we're gonna see who stacks up. I hope I can shoot above 200. That's the goal here, because I think the score is gonna be pretty low. And while you're at it, I mean, you might as well like, Hit the subscribe button down below. Follow us along for more fun videos like this. It's like a must have. I think I have a really good grasp on what my balls are doing because they're all doing a very similar thing, which is going straight through the face and splitting. I need to strike so bad. Oh, come on. Another lucky break. Ah, there's a chance. Sometimes. So we're gonna do some warm up shots, but I think just a fun rule for the warm up shots is you can only throw one ball. So you can't like get a lineup with a bunch of your balls. Good luck. I don't know any of these bowling balls that I'm throwing. I feel like I'm at a severe disadvantage because we walked out of the house. I was like, Cam, you got your bowling balls picked out. And he told me he only has 10 balls. I have about like 35 balls in my garage. So I had to pick out the 10 that I thought would strike the most. And I just, I have no idea because I don't know what they really do in relation to each other other than the 17 purple hammers that I have and the power torque, the power torque pearl, the damn good verge pearl. So I brought a lot of the ones I'm familiar with, but I haven't thrown these things against each other in, since before the tour started. Your last warm up. Oh my God, I'm in so much trouble. This first shot's gonna be crucial because I've already warmed up with this ball. It's like a must have. It's a good thing that was my last warm up shot because I'd be f***ed if that was in game. We are gonna pull the reality out to start. Let's see what happens. Let's put some stakes on this. Stakes? Beautiful. Some stakes. I would really enjoy a nice filet tonight. That does sound good. Before he pulls out his reality, this is the reality of the match. If Cam beats me, I'm buying him steaks tonight. Straight up, there is no counter bet. I would get you a steak as well. Perfect, that's even better. So if, if I beat Cam, I get a steak. That's perfect. Oh. We'll talk about your strategy after this. Let's play ball. A six pin enough. doing its job. Just enough. First ball out the bag. Conspiracy scheme. This is gonna be the strongest ball, the smoothest ball that I pull out, the earliest ball I pull out. And uh, for me, I'm just gonna step down in terms of length that it's gonna go down the pattern, not necessarily smooth or weak. Okay, we'll see how that turns out for you. That was like straight through, that was like a Greek church that just was a six, eight. Seasoned spare shooter, it should be no problem. Am for you. I a spare shooter? Huge. Ah, okay. First frame is technically the least important because I can still shoot 279, I guess. I don't know. A good score in this game for me is going to be like 210. I just got to hope I can beat Cam for the steaks. If there's a video of me cooking steaks, something's wrong because I don't know how to cook. All right, so we talked a little bit about my strategy. What's yours? Sure, so I'm going to be going to the Zenith next. I'm gonna just do the same thing as you just for the sake of the video. Just kind of go down the line. So this is also asymmetrical, but this is the pearl and it's got a little less dip than this. Okay. So that being said, I'm gonna I'm gonna move a little bit right, maybe one to two, and just keep the ball in front of me. Oh. I don't know, my footing's always pretty sloppy on this channel. <laughs> Fouled the last time and now I can't stand up straight. If he fouls on this video, I'm counting the foul. I don't care because last time I lost by 10, there was nothing on the line. This time there's stakes on the line. The fouls count. If I foul, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be so mad though. Were you worried? Textbook. Technically, I think the Power Torque Pearl is gonna be next earliest. Uh, and after this, I'll probably go to the knockout, the original knockout. Oh, cool looking. Brand new. I mean, it's a cool looking ball, Power Torque Pearl. 
and it's also gonna look cool when it packs 10 on this shot. I'm gonna move two, and I'm gonna try and use the hand and ball speed to keep these balls similar to each other. Hook. Oh my god. That would have been Thank strange. Thank God I messed it. That would have been that would have made me so mad. Now this is a serious question. Yeah. Was there any patterns this year on the PBA tour that you, you hooked at at this pin? I think the short pattern at the World Series, but it's very it's even pair to pair for me. I'm almost I'm like 90% of the time gonna throw straight at a six pin. A three pin on the other hand, I'll hook at if they're any remotely easy, just because it's closer. Right. For a six pin, I feel like I need to move. For a three pin, I can just throw it way slower and bang on it with my hand. Got it. And just, it'll hook over there. For a six pin, it's a little more of a like, an adjustment with foot and speed. I hook, at, I hook at it on house shots and anything I'm averaging like 240. Like Jackson, when I made the show, I probably hooked at some six pins. What ball we got this time? Hero solid. The OG. So you threw the Zenith. I would yeah. assume the hero solid would be earlier on the lane, no? Absolutely. So Absolutely. I, I, and I don't think I made the right move with the Zenith. I think I, think I needed to square up to it a little more, so. Okay. I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna do what I did with the Zenith, but I'm thinking since this one picks up so much earlier, it'll get there. Split the 8-9. I'm gonna have to replay that one because that was like a perfect strike. way right of where I was aiming. I was trying to go much straighter, but apparently I made the right move. It's as much of a game about accuracy as it is about your knowledge of where to play and which balls to throw. Next ball up for me is the knockout. This one's gonna go longer than that power torque pearl. Even though it's a solid, it's just, it's gonna hook way less, it's gonna flare way less, the core is way smaller, so. The knockout, I'm gonna up the speed, stay in the same spot. That next ball I throw on, next ball I throw on, I have to move because that was like super high flush. So I'm gonna have to move regardless. The melee blue. This one, as far as core specs, is pretty similar to the Hero Solid. So I'm thinking it it'll probably hook a similar amount, but it's gonna be a lot cleaner and maybe even just as smooth down lane just because of the high valve layout. So I'm gonna stand close to the same spot, but I'm just gonna try not to leak this one to the right. Okay. just as expected. Yeah, I think the kinetic black ice is probably next. Nah, I think the Bigfoot. Bigfoot's gonna be a pretty similar motion to that uh, that Power Torque Pearl, a little further down lane. And since I 6-8'd with the Power Torque Pearl, or 6 8 10 and since I 6 8 10 with the Power Torque Pearl, I think I'm gonna make just a two board move. Keep Let's the speed, keep the speed high. I'm going one, I lied, I'm going one. One board move. Push! My God. What is going on? What's going on? You're gonna have to pray for some splits from me. I have to go for the make. Ah, that's so bad, this Bounce. one. What are we thinking? We're thinking this happens every time I bowl with Seneca. I'm thinking this just happens every time you bowl me. I shot 250 last time I bowled you and you cheated in one. I don't know what you're talking about. Matchy, matchy. Matchy, matchy again. Damn good verge. Oh my God, I'm getting blown out early. I think I'm on the verge of an early win. This is a sad day for the channel. Just kidding, they're all sad days because I never freaking win on the channel. We're gonna move another one off the last shot. Okay. This ball doesn't tend to flare too often. Oh. Wow, that was some pin action if I've ever seen one. All right, down 45. I think I have a really good grasp on what my balls are doing, because they're all doing a very similar thing, which is going straight through the face of the I'm down 45. The thing is we're bowling on a house shot, so it's gonna be hard to come back. I definitely, I gotta have some strikes here. Starting with this kinetic black ice, this is the one. I'm gonna keep that too, I'm gonna move another board because all of my balls have gone high. I'm gonna keep the speed high, the hand out of it. Oh. Late big. tap on the seven. That was big, a late tap on the seven. This bowling alley, it's, it's just one of those I've, I've struggled with a lot. Uh, I find myself finding early hook and I don't want to move right because uh, early hook and moving right tends to be a lot of seven pins, but that one got the tap out and hopefully my next uh, my next couple can as well. Fifth frame update, I have 55 in the fourth with a strike. 
and Cam's got strike, eight spare, three bagger. So I'm down, I'm down 45 in the fifth. I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need quite the run here with a bunch of different bowling balls that I'm not really sure what they're gonna do, but Cam seems to have grasp on the pocket that I just don't have right now. So I gotta, I gotta step my game up and throw some really good shots down the stretch. As we all know, new bowling balls have incredible lane performance, but unfortunately, reactive resin balls fall victim to the natural and inevitable drying and hardening process, leading to what the bowling community calls ball death. At Magnum Bowling Products, we have developed a special ball enclosure called the Immortalizer, which uses our patented vapor barrier technology to preserve your ball's original durometer, lane engagement, and factory performance that we all love. With all of the talk about durometer, I'm sure most of you have made the connection between durometer and performance. The softer the ball, the greater the lane engagement and performance, which is why the USB-C has a limit to how soft a ball can be. With this being said, if you want to keep your ball performing with maximum potential and prevent your balls from drying out, protect your equipment with the immortalizers and get a leg up on your competition. The Immortalizer comes in a variety of different color combinations that you can mix and match to match all of the different balls in your arsenal. And visit us today at MagnumBowlingProducts.com to immortalize your game. Just a quick show and tell of how easy the bag is to use. You grab a ball that preferably matches, pop it in, fold down, and you're good to go. Eat lava. What's up with the old gems? Well, you see, they've been immortalized, so I'm not worried about them losing their performance or anything like that, and they have large footprint, great lane engagement, and I think they're going to strike. One left of the verge. I'm expecting this one to be quite a bit cleaner and more angular down the lane just because of the nature of the, the cover stock. We're just going to give this just a little bit more room down the lane and move that one left. See what happens. Where's that nine pin? I need that nine pin to stand. I feel like I got a good enough sense of the pattern that I'm just gonna hook at it. You're hooking at the spare? Call it a day, yeah. Mr. Accuracy himself. I, I cannot explain to you guys enough how crucial this is. I need to strike so bad. Apparently there's a lot of oil in the middle of this pattern. That was inexcusable, I should have thrown straight at it. What's I'm going on here? I'm so glad you hooked at that. Coming off of that, uh, that kinetic, this should be similar-ish. Yeah, this should be this should be similar. I should, it's gonna go a little more forward than the kinetic. I'm gonna stand in a similar spot. I'm gonna stand on 16, couple boards right from where I started. A similar shot, some higher ball speed, not a lot of hand. Oh, some good pin action on that one. I respect that. And I saw it go down lane. I wasn't sure if it was gonna strike and then, bang! Needed it. Decided to mix it up. Brought one of my trick balls. Okay. Now really personally, I wouldn't consider this a trick ball, but a lot of my friends say that, so. What's the layout on it? Why would they call it a trick ball? This, this ball is 70 by two by 80. So usually I like to use it for short patterns when I'm not throwing sure. the thing. We're gonna move quite a bit right and play right up the middle. Right up the middle lane. Yeah, I'm moving another one and a half off where I was with the um, melee, so. That's a factor of that two inch pin. Good Are you redeeming so. yourself and hooking it again? No, 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 no. We're gonna go straight at this one. This is another massive strike to keep it close. Apparently all I know how to do is either strike or get eight. Packy's got a critical moment here. Strike here, puts me down 10, but ball in hand. So my next ball up is a melee jab. Again, it's gonna be very similar to the last one, the Web Pearl, maybe just a little smoother. Uh, again, this one's laid out even stronger than that Web Pearl, so should be a smoother shape. I should be able to stand in the same spot and do a very similar thing and hopefully snap that seven out. Another lucky break, as I mean, you're probably not surprised. Yeah, two handers. Okay. Now tell us a little about the ball. That was a Turbo R, very low diff ball, low end ball as well. And on that one, just because of the low diff and polished cover stock, moved a little bit further right than I was with the, tundra. sorry, the Tundra. And I just tried to throw it up the middle. I got three frames left. Throw, I've, I've switched up the strategy. I'm not. 
I'm still kind of going from front of the lane to back of the lane in terms of hook potential and where it's gonna hook on the lane. And, but I'm also just choosing the balls in order that I think are gonna like continue the string of strikes. So probably next ball would be the counter attack, uh, solid, and then this one. But I feel like this one gives me the best chance to strike because it's very similar to that melee jab blue. It's a damn good verge pearl, brand new ball from DV8. Ah! I had the lead, and now I don't. Do you attribute that to this just being Seneca lanes? Because I know you were... I reasoned through it. I think I threw it a little slow, and I didn't account for the amount more that it was going to hook than the melee jab. I thought since the melee jab went a little light, I could throw it in the same spot. I probably had to move on top of that. Three. You just bring one oldie out after the next. Well, this one's a bit different. The reason I have this is because my friend Packy here actually gave it to me when I was first looking to try 16 pounds. Similar to the last couple frames, we're gonna be quite conservative here and just throw it up the middle. Especially because I'm not expecting this ball to hook much. Split, 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 split. Just skidded quite far and barely tipped in. I need the rest of them and I need some help from you. That's not a damn good verge, is it? Counter attack solid. Counter attack solid. Counter attack solid. One of my favorite balls of all time on house shots. So if this doesn't strike, you're lost. You guys should all unsubscribe from the channel. Oh Go. my god. Whoa. I said oh my god because I thought that, that was gonna big four. And then it just stopped hooking. It has like 500 grit on it. So this is just a quick observation. Notice how I've only gotten eight, and it seems like you only keep having the seven, the seven split. The one nine spare. It's weird. And they're always like this. Spares are at a premium today, apparently. What do we got? I don't know if this was the smartest play as far as strategy, but I did save the hardest one for last. I think I need to strike out just because that's what I want, but I don't think I need it. Silence. Nothing but silence. One for the tie. I'm going for the tie. We talked about this on the channel like at the Women's National, so like two weeks ago we talked about it on the channel. If you had the opportunity, do you go for the auto win and try and make the spare, or do you go for the guaranteed tie? Because right now I can strike out with my purple hammer to tie. I just know statistically, based on your game so far, the most you've had in a row is three. And you're throwing a ball that will obviously roll completely different than all the others, given that it's your thing. Yeah. So I think your odds of getting a three-bagger aren't necessarily the greatest. That's it. Take the camera. I have no idea where to stand. I'm standing in the same spot, hopefully shifting it to the left, and hopefully it hooks a similar amount. Obviously, completely different shape, but hopefully a similar amount. Oh, my God. Come on, there's a chance. Sometimes. What a break for me by, by you. I mean, I, what I meant was, I'm sorry that you 4-9, that was tough. Purple hammy. Nervy? Very. It's for stakes. That shot was so much better than my first one. And look, so much worse. You know how I feel about that? That's how I feel about that. Man, am I frustrated. If I'm not gonna make my spares early, why would I make my spares late? God! That was probably one of the craziest games and came down to the 10th frame. You left a dirty pocket split and I go strike eight pins. So two really good matches on the channel so far. That was the 10 ball challenge. So it's a great game to play to learn your arsenal a little better. I appreciate you guys sticking around all the way to the end of the channel. Thanks to Cam and Magnum Bowling Products for sponsoring this video. With his sponsorship money, I'm gonna go buy us some steaks. So uh, thanks for watching, follow along for the next video. Don't forget to subscribe down below and uh, you can catch us on more fun videos like this and more tournament vlogs like the last weekend. So until the next one, peace.